Hello, everyone. My name is David Stoss. I'm with the uh, I'm a senior transportation planner with the Ulster County Transportation Council, and I wanted well to welcome you this evening for a presentation, an open house, uh, virtual open house presentation for the Kingston Rail Crossing study uh, in the city of Kingston. This study is. Um, uh, is a project that we're looking to evaluate uh, the safety for the West Shore CSX rail rail line that passes through the city of Kingston. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the existing street crossings, crashes, and trespass incidents that have happened along the corridor. Um, and then we're going to be considering the impact of the surrounding land uses that kind of drive those movements across the corridor and uh, influence how people interact with the corridor. So tonight we're going to be going through some of the, the initial work that we've done, the, some of the data collection and uh, what we've seen there and give a good overview of the project and the, and the corridor itself. So thank you for your time and uh, I'm going to pass it off to the uh, rest of the project team to do introductions. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, David. My name is Katie Craig. I'm the project manager from WSP. With me from WSP, I have James Fox and Sean Middleton, as well as our sub-consultant for public outreach, um, Susan Flickstein and Julian Wexer is gonna be participating tonight from them. So we wanted to thank everyone for taking their time out either this evening to join the public open house or to listen to the recording. A little agenda for tonight's open house. First, we're gonna give a brief overview of the study area. What we've been doing so far in the study, we'll show a brief four minute video and then we'll go over some existing data and talk about possible mitigation measures. And we will be asking you for your input and participation through some polls this evening. So the main focus of our study area has been along the CSX rail corridor starting in the rail yard to the north of Flatbush Avenue and continuing to the south of Broadway Avenue. The study area does include six at-grade rail crossings at Flatbush Am Avenue, Cemetery Drive, Gage Street, Fox Hall with South Manor and Stephan Street, Tenbrock Avenue and Smith Avenue. So we wanted to briefly go over the study area, the, the study objective here that we have developed. But before we do that, we just wanted to show this interesting video to show how when the gates go down at an at-grade rail crossing within the city of Kingston, you can see some of the impatience that people have. And this vehicle just performed a U-turn here at this grade crossing. <clears throat> so the study objective we have is to evaluate and provide mitigation solutions that are going to enhance the safety along the rail corridor, focusing on the existing information that we have collected at the grade crossings and within the rail corridor throughout the city of Kingston. We've looked at vehicular crashes at the grade crossings, trespass incidents along the corridor in the study area, and how they relate to the surrounding land uses within the city of Kingston. So next, we just wanna show you a quick little video um, that the mayor of the city of Kingston, Steve Noble, was gracious to help us um, produce. Everyone, my name is Steve Noble, and I'm the mayor here in the city of Kingston. The Ulster County Transportation Council uh, is undertaking a rail crossing study to help evaluate and enhance safety along the CSX rail corridor here in the city of Kingston. We are so excited to be able to get the public's input on the existing conditions and movement of people and vehicles across and alongside our tracks. The public outreach meetings intend to bring constituents and key stakeholders together to help understand how people interact within the corridor. Your presence and expertise will be invaluable to this conversation. The Ulster County Transportation Council is undertaking a rail crossing safety study to assess and improve safety along the regional West Shore Railroad Corridor in the city of Kingston. 
The study will focus on assessing existing street crossings, crashes, and trespass incidents along the rail corridor while considering the impact of surrounding land uses. Rail corridors in urban areas are common in the U.S. The CSX rail corridor runs through the middle of the city of Kingston and provides for some challenges for residents and visitors who cross from west to east or vice versa. WSP in association with SGB was hired to review the rail corridor and evaluate specific areas of the corridor for ideas to improve the safety of crossing the rail corridor. Review of preliminary data and site evaluation indicated that at least three areas stand out as focus areas. The first is alongside the tracks in between Flatbush Avenue and Cemetery Drive. The second is the at grade crossing at Fox Hall Avenue. And third, the area south of Broadway. The contributing factors in these three locations are very different. In consecutive field visits to the study area, trespassing was observed from the at-grade crossing with Cemetery Drive along the rail corridor to the at-grade crossing with Flatbush Avenue. There are known origins and destinations to the northwest of St. Mary's Cemetery that make this a desirable shortcut. As observed in the field, there is visible worn pedestrian paths located here. The at-grade crossing at Foxhall Avenue is angled with three other streets feeding into the crossing. The configuration is confusing for vehicles and pedestrians seem to cut the angle and cross the rail tracks away from the marked crossings. South of Broadway, there isn't a crossing, but high schoolers and others trespass along the rail line from neighborhoods west of the rail line to access the Kingston High School and YMCA located east of the rail line. These pedestrians could use the protected grade separated crossing at Broadway, but that would add several minutes to their journey. Some fencing was erected to manage this trespass activity, but the fence was quickly damaged to allow the activity to resume. As our study continues, additional areas will be evaluated and recommendations to improve safety will be provided to Ulster County Transportation Council. We strive to get input from the community to inform the study so that the recommendations provide effective and reasonable solutions to improve community safety along the rail corridor. So thank you um, for lending your time, your energy, and your commitment to being able to make sure that our corridor is as safe as possible. Hi everyone, my name is Okay, so next we also just wanted to share that we do have a link and a QR code for a project website. Um, we will soon be populating this website with a storyboard that actually provides an executive summary on what we've done on the study so far. So if you'd like to use your phones and get the QR code or enter in the link. Um, we can also put that in the chat for you. So next I'm gonna hand it off to Sean from our team and he's gonna go over the existing conditions that we have received and evaluated from FRA. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Sean Middleton. I am a consultant uh, in the field of safety and security with WSP and I'm going to review some of the data um, at the crossings. This data is specific to trains striking vehicles, uh, not pedestrians. We have an additional slide later on that discusses uh, strikes with pedestrians. As you can see, we pulled all the data that we had available starting in 1976 and running through 2022. You can also see that from 2018 to 2022, we have had at least one strike at one crossing each year. Next slide, please. This data um, highlights where the majority of the strikes for vehicles have taken place with Fox Hall Avenue accounting for 66% of the incidents. 
as you saw in the earlier presentation, Fox Hall Avenue, that crossing uh, has a number of different uh, feeder streets which have odd angles, which may result in uh, a visibility issue. Next, please. Uh, uh, this is a little more additional information. Um, the crossings uh, and the damage uh, associated with those crossings, again, Fox Hall Avenue being uh, the single largest contributor to uh, the cost of damage, followed by Flatbush Avenue. Next slide, please. All right. Uh, this is, these two slides are the slides I was speaking about concerning uh, pedestrian trespassing. Again, we started uh, uh, at around 2012, pulling the data from the FRA and moving through 2022. Uh, the next slide gives you some, some idea of what was recorded from the train crew's um, view as the event took place. Uh, there seems to be a number of walking events throughout the years where uh, individuals are struck by um, rail cars or rail equipment while walking, uh, some of the lying down events, and then of course sitting and running. Next please. These uh, are a uh, obviously visualizations of the crossings that we were talking about. Yeah. <clears throat> So I think, David, we were going to pull up a poll for the participants and try to start a group discussion. Yeah, of course. So we'll ask here about real crossing safety. I'll launch a poll. This is there are two questions and we're looking to ask um, what crossing do you feel the least safe using and which grade crossing or in which case uh, crossing do you feel the safest at? So we'll throw up that poll just for a couple of seconds and just kind of, we have the images here to give a little bit of a reminder of what each intersection looks like as you're going through those. All right, I'm gonna end this poll. And thank you for the input there. I think that's, yeah, that's good on this. Okay. So next we're going to have James from WSP is going to go over some mitigation at our grade crossings. Yeah, good evening, everybody. So once we have identified from the data where our hotspots and trends are, we start to follow industry leading practices for creative mitigation strategies on how we could help reduce risk at these uh, trending locations. The industry historically focuses their mitigation solutions around three areas, we call them the three E's, and they focus on engineering solution, educational solutions, and enforcement solutions. So I'm gonna highlight right now the engineering solutions that are available. These are some of the more common ones that can be implemented to help further reduce um, vehicular collisions with train equipment at grade crossings. Uh, obviously, most of the grade crossings or all the grade crossings within the corridor here have advanced warning signs uh, and, and, and signals, uh, active gates, but there are some areas that we think could be improved at certain locations where additional signalization and or uh, street markings could help demarcate the crossing and the approach of the crossing to give the motor vehicle driver more advanced warning and take caution earlier before they start to navigate over the highway grade crossing. Some additional enhancements that are uh, options to help mitigate grade crossing events are things like four quad gates, where you would have in the bottom uh, picture to the left, you have gates and flashers that basically come down in the four quadrants before the approach to the rail crossing and they would prevent the drivers from being able to go around the gates, which is one of the more common uh, reasons and causes for a lot of these events. The impatience of drivers trying to either bait the gates or go around the gates puts them into harm's way. And at that point, the train cannot stop and the car and the, and the rail equipment get into an, an incident. So four quad gates is one um, solution that can be implemented. 
Some similar but uh, different approaches are centerline delineator barriers, as you can see on the picture on the top right, a barrier or delineator placed in the center lane down dividing the two uh, approaching lanes of the crossing also helps prevent cars from going around the center lanes and trying to beat the gates. Um, you could also substitute that delineator with an actual concrete island, further making it difficult for cars to try to drive into the oncoming lane to go around the gates. Uh, we did have some previous research where there is some reconfiguration of the Fox Hall um, and South Manor and Stephen Street interchange that would improve the way that crossing and the traffic controls could work in that area to help identify the crossing, um, enhance the way the drivers navigate through that crossing and make that intersection a little bit uh, safer. So actual reconfiguration of the highway in that area is another solution that could be implemented. And another solution in working with the railroads is if certain crossings are not utilized at, at a, a high density, possible consolidation and closure of rail crossings would ultimately eliminate the exposure at that location. Uh, and that would have to be worked out with CSX and partnership with the railroad to make sure that that's something that's feasible. So these are some of the engineering solutions that are available to entertain and look at when helping reduce risks at grade crossings. The education solutions that are available um, are really to help inform and share information with the community. And you can do this through a variety of different ways. Uh, these town hall meetings is one way to help inform and educate the community about the risks and the dangers of trying to navigate through highway grade crossings and some of the at-risk behaviors that drivers put themselves in um, that cause some of these incidents. The other types of educational solutions are some on-site events, uh, community outreach on-site, partnering with some community businesses and schools to help further educate the public specific to hotspots within the community and things that we would need the public to do to kind of help improve safety and help not put themselves into harm's way when approaching grade crossings. There's also um, a lot of safety tips that can be offered to motorists through your Department of Motor Vehicles and some other community outreach that focuses on the, on the motor vehicle population within the community. And then finally, Operation Lifesaver is a internationally known program Almost all the main railroads through the country partner with Operation Lifesaver, and they provide uh, an endless list of resources, including free public outreach presentations, literature, educational information to help further make the public aware of some of the risks and dangers when navigating both um, in vehicles as well as pedestrian um, movement through rail corridors. And uh, I know CSX is a partner with Operation Lifesaver and has done a lot of work in this community and, and along this rail corridor to kind of help not only with the engineering solutions I touched on, but also some of these educational outreach programs that are available to help bring awareness to the community. And the third E that we have for grade crossing protection is the enforcement solution. And this is basically where the community works with law enforcement and the railroads will work with their local law enforcement agencies to help identify where people are either illegally trespassing or uh, performing poor or at risk behaviors with their automobiles at grade crossings and try to highlight the dangers of that by forceful enforcement through ticketing and citations of the individuals that are performing these dangerous um, maneuvers across crossings. And through the enforcement, there's also new technology that's starting to come about with video surveillance and artificial intelligence interface with the video surveillance where the video cameras can start to detect unique and at-risk behaviors and highlight that and share that information with the law enforcement and community uh, partners so that they can see where the trends are occurring, have actual uh, visual documented incidents of these and start to use this for enforcement capability when trying to educate the public. So there are the three E solutions that we have identified as some options for grade crossing safety, 
And then we also have the similar approach for trespassing safety and uh, pedestrian trespassing, some additional solutions in the engineering category that can be implemented. Uh, we, we saw alongside the right of way where some of the students by the school are cutting some of the traditional cyclone fencing. There are security fences and, and um, more robust types of fencing that can be installed at certain areas along the right of way. These are a lot more difficult to compromise and cut through and making them more stable and put up a better positive barrier to prevent people from uh, trespassing onto the right of way. Additional signage, particularly signage, not only around the dangers and the fact that it is illegal to trespass, the right of way is private property and the railroad owns that. So it is illegal to trespass on that private property, but also there's signage available uh, for things like suicide help and suicide prevention, since that is one avenue in which people do tend to use when contemplating suicide. Um, there are also uh, natural barriers that provide maybe a better aesthetic look to the right of way, but still have that same um, effect of being able to prevent people from walking from maybe street or the community onto the tracks or across the tracks. So the pictures here show uh, on the right, using some heavy boulders and rocks to form that natural barrier or some vegetation and planting that can go along the right of way that makes it very difficult for people to access the right of way through that vegetation. Uh, we've talked about earlier uh, also uh, opportunities for pedestrian overpasses, giving the community uh, a safer uh, pathway to get across the, the right of way without having to actually cross the tracks. And one of the areas that we have identified so far is along the Greenkill Avenue area by Broadway, uh, where there used to be some stairs there to navigate the new overpass um, could be something to be looked at where that those stairs could be reintroduced and provide a, a safer path for um, the community and the pedestrians in that area. So there are some of the engineering solutions that could be uh, implemented for pedestrian trespass events. We still have educational solutions that are almost identical to the same ones that we could implement for the grade crossings, sharing information with the community, on-site safety events, education to uh, the pedestrian population. Ideally, school populations are a great uh, avenue to start sending that message and communicating with the, the younger population in the, in the community about the dangers and risks of illegally trespassing on right-of-ways. And Operation Lifesaver, as I said before, not only has a lot of literature and a lot of good information to share on grade crossing safety, but they also have a lot of concentrated information to share on pedestrian trespass safety and the risks associated with that. And the Operation Lifesaver programs are really nice because they can tailor the presentation and literature to any type of audience, whether it be young school age kids, middle school age kids, adults, uh, or even um, the elderly population as, as they're going through changes in their lifestyle for driving capabilities. Um, Operation Lifesaver really has a lot of good literature that can be tailored to any population uh, in the community. And then the enforcement is similar to the, uh, the grade crossings, but um, you can use things like cameras and intrusion detections at certain hot spots where trespassings are known to record and document those illegal acts and work with your local law enforcement agencies to kind of uh, make sure those, those individuals are dealt with and that there's enforcements about that illegal action of trespassing along the right of way. So these are all the different types of solutions that we are entertaining, common ones used throughout the industry and focusing on the three E principles um, these, this is where we are going to be focusing some of our recommendations around these through three E solutions for mitigations in both pedestrian trespassing as well as great crossing safety. All right. <clears throat> Thanks, Sean and James, for going over that. Um, so, David, we do have another group discussion. And I didn't know if you had some more poll questions that you wanted to share. Yeah, so we just... Uh... In a similar vein to the previous poll question, um, the options that we have here, we're looking at which trespass mitigation do you prefer and allowed to choose multiples if there's some multiple that stand out to you and, and which trespass mitigations do you least like. So we'll leave that up for a moment here, gather results. Okay. 
Okay, looks like we're getting all the responses that we're going to get. So I'm going to end the poll there. All right. Thank you, everyone, and uh, we'll continue on. Yep. So now we were just going to open it up to questions and answers. Anything about what we've presented so far or any of the mitigation questions you have, any of the existing data? Yeah, we'll ask if there's any attendees that have wished to ask any questions, feel free to do so in the Q&A or by raising your hands and we'll allow you to talk. Okay, I'm, I'm seeing no questions so far in the Q&A. And no hands raised. So I wanted to thank everyone for joining this evening. And if you're watching via recording, thanks for taking the time to, to uh, view through. And uh, I think I'll hand it back over to Katie for some of an overview of the next steps. Yeah, thanks, David. So again, as the next steps are shown here is we are gonna finalize our mitigation ops options. And when we do that, we are also gonna associate that with some costs. We are gonna put them into a draft study report David, that I believe the county will be sharing with the public and leave open to some comment period. And then we'll be finalizing that study report in early 2025. 2024. Oh, 2024, <laughs> sorry. We go that Delete, long, we got edit. problems. <laughs> Delete, edit, 2024, <laughs> sorry. Great. Okay. Well, thanks everyone. And uh, of course, if you do need to reach out, um, feel free to take a look at the project page. Um, you can, yeah, we're available via email or of course a phone call. Um, so please feel free to do that. And we'll keep uh, upcoming events posted on the project website, as well as the participate Ulster page. Um, you should have the same information in both locations. For, for upcoming input options. So thanks everyone. And I hope you have a great evening.